The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret society, to secret oath, and to secret proceedings. Waking humanity, one soul at a time. This is The World You Don't Know Radio Show with your host, Nick O'Connell. Now, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're very welcome along to this week's edition of The World You Don't Know. Myself, Mick O'Connell. I've got a guest lined up, but I've also got another guest in the studio with me. I've got Robbie um, Gorman, who's uh, my wingman. He comes in every now and again. He has been up now for a good while. Um, he's just going to be sitting in. He might ju- jump in with the odd question, but um, he's going to be listening in to the guest, and he, he will have access to the guest if he wants to jump in and out. Now, my guest is Tom Ryan from um, Tipperary. He has a website called Total Mind Dynamics. One of Tom's big passions is personal sovereignty. With the weekend that was in it, Ireland's Independence Day, sovereignty is something that is, I suppose, to the forefront of Tom's mind and my mind over the last few few days. Now, I did speak last week, I had Billy McGuire on, and we were speaking about the turning of the sovereign sale ceremony that took place in the Mansion House on Saturday gone, Ireland's Independence Day. If you looked at my post today on um, The World You Don't Know in relation to tonight's show... I did say in the post that um, our sovereignty and the turning of the sovereign sale, Ireland's Independence Day, has been suppressed, and it's been suppressed for a very good reason. So I'm going to get my guest on now in a couple of minutes, and we're going to talk about why it's been suppressed, what's actually going on, and what can we do about it? Why, why are people allowing a situation like that to exist in the first place? I've had Tom on before, and Tom will tell you that it's, it's basically it's mass, mass hypnosis. I suppose it's like money control for the masses. That's what's actually going on. People are just, you know, walking into the night, I suppose, just blind to what's actually going on, even on their own doorstep. You know, this country's been ripped off left, right and centre. I mean, the austerity that's going on in this country, that's only the tip of the iceberg. It's been going on for a long, long time. Most people don't even consider, you know, the resources are being stolen. They don't even think about stuff like that. Let alone everything else that's going on. I mean, when it comes to resources, like, you know, our gold, our oil, all our minerals, our fish stocks f- from around the Irish um, seas, I mean, foreigners are allowed to take more fish out of our waters than Irish fishermen are. And as I said, this has been going on, not just recently, it's been going on for a long, long, long time, and it's all part of a an ongoing plan. And I'm going to go straight to my guest, Tom. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, good evening to all your listeners. Listen, you're very welcome along to the world you don't know, and you have been on before, and can I just p- say before we continue... Um, I'd like to apologise for the last time you were supposed to come on. I did get you mixed up with uh, another guest that I had on, Mark Devlin, and unfortunately I double-booked you that day, and um, I didn't mean to put you out, but anyway, it's great to have you on now. No problem. It's delightful to be on with you. Now listen, you. I don't know, did you make it to the Mansion House today? day? Of course I did. Oh, you did. I didn't make it myself now due to family circumstances. Something came up, and unfortunately I couldn't make it in. There was nothing I could do. Um, I heard they got into the round room, so do you want to tell us a bit about how it went on? Uh, how things uh, we transferred? The round room. <clears throat> uh, there was a bit of a problem in that we didn't have enough time, really, to give due respect to the ceremony. But it was good, and it was, it was okay. And it was repeated out, outside afterwards. And uh, then we went <clears throat> to the um, to GPO and recited the proclamation there. In fact, I recited the proclamation in, in the mansion house. And then we went up to uh, Grand Bureau, uh, or sorry, to Parnell Square, to um, Vaughan's Hotel. Hotel. And from there we went to the teacher's club and we had a, a very, very good meeting for the next two or three hours. And it was nice to see some new people there and to see all the uh, usual people that, that are attending year after year after year after year. And again, thanks to Billy Maguire for keeping the IRB alive for all this time. Mm. Now, I was looking at Facebook over the weekend and social media in general, and there was a lot of negativity towards Ireland's Independence Day. There was some idiots coming on, and I won't mention anyone's names. But they were basically saying that, um, oh, it's all just, you know, arty-farty crap. It's not, it's, it's not significant. It doesn't have any impact on people's lives. And I didn't bother replying to anybody on it now. I didn't comment on anything. But what I was saying to myself was, did these people not realise that the moment the IRB stopped doing the turning of the sovereign seal, then we've lost our sovereignty completely. You know, and that's the importance of that ceremony, I believe, that it keeps I, our sovereignty intact. Those, those people making those criticisms, because um, 
because it's getting stronger year after year. Billy spoke of the time when there was only four or five people at the mansion house. Now it's grown into great big numbers of people right. more than actually can get in. Um, you were talking there about the loss of our fisheries and the loss of our waters and the loss of our minerals and all the rest of it. Uh, that came in the 1937 Constitution, which was put forward by de Valera and which was okayed by the Vatican before they actually enacted it. It wasn't enacted legally because it, there, there was no, um, what we call, um, there was a plebiscite, not a referendum. And a plebiscite is not binding, a referendum is, because they were afraid to put it to a re proper referendum. And if it was turned down, they could have enacted it anyway with the kind of silliness that was going on. But um, <clears throat> prior to that, the 1919 constitution guaranteed all of those resources to the people. Even the Free State uh, Constitution of 1922 uh, guaranteed all of those rights to the people. The 1937 Constitution took them away and gave them to this fiction called the state. And that's why they can give them away to whoever they like. And that's why they can let these super trawlers in to rape the seas. And they can let uh, people into uh, Mayo <coughs> and attack the people and take the gases and charge enormous figures for it and all the rest of what they're doing. And now they want to do it with the water and God knows what else. So these people who are doing this, these so-called politicians, civil servants, whoever they are, I mean, what they're doing is completely unpatriotic. So who are they doing it for? They're obviously not doing it for the Irish people. So who are these people working for? They're globalists. They, 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 they have this global agenda in mind. They, they're, they're part of what we call, if you like, the New World Order. And they have this globalist agenda. They want to sell it all over to, to this global agenda. They'll get big, fat jobs in Europe and wherever else. Like um, Mary Robinson is now working for the United Nations. The whole thing is being um, orchestrated by Peter Sutherland, who has also got a big job at the United Nations and got a series of big jobs before that with international banks and things like that. And he's the one who's really running the government, not Andy Kenny. Now, if Peter Sutherland, he's a well-known Bilderberger, am I correct? Mm -hmm. he, he's, Absolutely. He and practically he heads it up. And with him uh, recently to a Bilderberger meeting. Now, can I ask you, in the context of Donald Trump getting elected, do you see all the the, the, the routine that's going on over in America, you know? I've, I've been laughing at it all weekend, some of these <laughs> these liberals and stuff like that, you know? They're, like, they're nuts. They're absolutely crazy. Women walking down the street dressed as vaginas, you know? But... Um, I mean, they're really, they're really letting down, they're letting themselves down something horrific. They're idiots is what they are. And they're, they're proving themselves to be the sheep that they are. You know, yeah, that yeah. they're going along just to get along or, or whatever. Um, do you think Trump is a wild card? Do you think he's another JFK? Or do you think he's a plan for the new world order? Because he seems to be causing up the Zionists in all time, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, uh, I don't know what he is. Uh, but anything, it's a terrible thing to say, but anything is better than Hillary Clinton. Oh, we're out of shadow of a doubt. I, I, I reserve my judgment in him because I want to see him do some, some yeah. positive things. Well, he dis I don't know if you're aware of this now, but on the news that this evening, it's transpired that he's um, rolled back America's involvement in TTP, the Trans or the Trans Pacific Partnership. Yes, I've seen that, and hopefully he'll roll back on the the, the TTIP as well. And the chances are he will if he's rolled back in one. And that that in itself was worth electing him for. So do you think? Um, do you think that it, it might have a knock-on effect, and you know, roll back the TTIP over here, pull Ireland out? I mean, I remember Mink Flanagan. He put a video up there not so long ago, where he was in the European Parliament and he wanted to read the um, the contents of TTIP. Yeah, they didn't let him see the draft contents at all. They had to, he had to jump through fiery hoops, and he was warned, like, don't even bring a, a camera phone into the room with you. And yeah. if you do, we lock them away, and no one else will ever get to see them. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, if they were honourable and above board, they'd have no problem with everybody seeing them. So the fact is, they're not. Because the whole principle of TTIP is that the corporations can sue the state if the state refuses them anything. In other words, it gives carte blanche to the corporations to do what they like in every state that signs up to it. And no, we, we cannot have that. Because then the corporations become the power superior to the state and superior to the people. Mm, pure fascism. That's what that is. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it's corporate feudalism, actually. Can, can I jump in there for a second? Yeah, Mickey, Tom, nice to speak to you. Tom, this is Robbie T uh, uh, Tom, by the way. He's in the studio here with me. Hello, Robbie. Pleased to meet you. You too, Tom. Um, just on Donald Trump and the whole um, establishment in Europe, the threat to the neocon um, system. Now, mm -hmm. I've been working in a couple of venues over the last couple of months. 
and even before Trump, Trump was elected, on the run up to the, the, the election, I've seen a lot of uh, large corporate um, financial and uh, law firms um, in action, and I've been listening to their speeches. And even before he was elected, they were running scared, and they hadn't got a decent word to say about him, and all they were doing was appraising uh, Clinton. Now, that sent uh, alarm bells in my head, because... Even before he was elected, these were this and this man. They were saying, "Is this? Is that?" You know. All so maybe he all is the that all the, re- all the rhetoric that you've been hearing, it hasn't changed from the person on the street to America, the anti-Trump, to the businessman. It's still the same rhetoric. No one has aunt new to say. But my point is, um, they are running scared, and now the fact that he's in place, he's in power, he's made his uh, promises. Okay, he's turned around. He said the TTIP, right? We're going to quash that. Uh, he's talking about the the vaccine programs. He yeah. has uh, JFK Jr. looking at uh, and he's anti-vaccine. Mon- isn't he? Monitoring yeah, because that. Kennedy is completely against the the the, the, the vaccines as a stand. He's not yeah. against vaccines per se. He said he's had his children vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. yeah but he's against all this mercury and all these foreign bodies being put in. The yeah, vaccines. and also uh, I, I heard something there last day or two where again, one of Trump's sons allegedly was harmed by a vaccine. So, you know, there's a lot of push there to uh, get in there, find out what's going on. And his biggest opposition, I imagine, it would be the pharmaceutical company in America, which will have a massive uh, impact on us because we buy all that. Well, I don't buy it, but, you know, there's a big... Um, there's a big... Um, system here in the hospitals where they buy all their uh, pharmaceutical in. So you can, you can only look around the amount of uh, pharmaceutical companies you have here with, with Bayer and Pfizer and all that. But what I'm saying is, going forward, looking at these people having these uh, meetings and giving out, you know these people have invested in futures where mm-hmm. they say they're going to put in X amount into pharmaceutical business. And Trump is bad for business. Um, you know, all this corporatization, all corporatization, globalism. And these are upset big time because they have probably invested heavily through law and through banking and through financing. Mm. You know, so yeah. it's really hit the fan. So it'll be an interesting year to see how this pans out. How do you think, Tom, I, mean, I just want to get your opinion on, you know, Trump's effect on this country. How do you think things will pan out in this country for Trump? He has said to, to, to the American people, and quite rightly so, you know, he said he's going to bring all companies back to America, like Google, Ford, anyone. If, you, if you're an American company manufacturing stuff or selling goods and services outside of America, he wants them all to come home. And everyone is calling them now a racist and an anti-Semite, um, anti-immigration, anti-foreigner, basically. But, you know, the Irish are the first to turn around and say charity begins at home. It will prove I was doing something right. Now, uh, it won't affect this country very much. Take Google and Facebook and all of the others. They need a European headquarters. They have them in Dublin, and they will always need a European headquarters. Mm. So there's no point so in relocating them to back to America. It stops them um, from fiddling taxes. Yeah, I mean, you know, with all the people that are complaining, like, I can't help thinking, like, the Irish especially are always the first to say charity begins at home, and that's all he's doing. He's oh. looking after his own people. He's bringing back nationalism. They hate that because they are globalists. Mm. And you see, all the corporations wants to create one global economy that they control completely. And that's what TTIP was all about. It gives them complete control because it, give, it gives them a veto over, over every government. Yeah. So, so you see these pictures on Facebook and stuff, and I'm sure you've come across in these memes. You know, someone will say, oh, you t- still think Trump is the good guy, but, and they'll put a picture of him at a party with Hillary and Bill Clinton. You know, and they look like they're cozying up to each other. But I would say, like, he is a billionaire. He has to mix in those circles anyway. Yeah, that's what I would be thinking. Yeah. Well, I'd agree with that. I mean, I, they could probably take photographs with me with people whom I would have nothing to do with, wouldn't like what, one bit, and they could say, oh, he's causing up to them. I wouldn't yeah. cause up to them at all. I could have been just in the same place as them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I've been in the courts quite a lot recently, uh, helping out people to try and save their homes. So I could have been uh, taking photographs with some very dubious lawyers and barristers uh, and saying that I, I was in with them. Yeah. I'm not, because I'm very much opposed to them. Yeah. I, I so understand I that for time, yeah. No, I wouldn't. No, I like, don't myself personally. But I'm saying, like, but people do put that sort of stuff out there, you know. And it, you know, I suppose it would make, you know, an uneducated person who would be hoping that Trump is one of the good guys think, well, maybe he is one of the bad guys. Then just by looking at that picture, you know, that's what I, I, I would be thinking. Everybody, just hold your fire. Let's wait and see. And give him a chance. Give the man a chance. Yeah. Uh, Obama did terrible things, and they never criticised him because he was a globalist. Yeah, so I think people were afraid to criticise Obama because he's black. And I'm not just saying that, but I firmly believe that. I think people were, you know, in the mainstream media were genuinely afraid to really criticise him in case they pulled the race card on them. 
Uh, the mainstream media are a bunch of crooked liars anyway. Yeah. This is why we have fantastic, wonderful new media like yourself. And, yeah, true enough, Tom, true enough. <laughs> Look, I just keep a rail on this show. I, don't, I wouldn't bullshit nobody. There's no point, you know. Kind of I stuff know. only comes back to haunt you. Now, I need to go to break in a couple of minutes, but I have one more question in relation to Trump, and I'll move on from him then. Yeah. As you said, he's a nationalist. The, the IRB, they would be nationalists, you know, look after Ireland Force, look after the sovereign people of Ireland, and spread that message around the world by all means. Absolutely. If Trump is what a lot of people are hoping that he is, you know, this nationalist who's going to make America great again, mm -hmm. you know, if he got wind that, you know, Ireland was been shafted under the, the Oireachtas, you know, and that it was all a big con job, you know, on behalf of the British, do you reckon someone like him, powerful enough as he is as the American president, could step in and demand that our constitution from 1918 being, rest being restored fully? It's unlikely because as a nationalist, he's on, he, he's, he wants to stop, step back from interfering in the internal relations of other countries. Like, I, I think he'd probably step back from Syria or else he'd join with the Russians and getting rid of this horrible ISIS thing, which, in fact, financed, was financed by Obama mm -hmm. and his cohorts. So uh, I don't think he, he will interfere in that way. I don't think it'll make a great deal of difference to us. I mean, they're telling um, Kenny not to give him the shamrock. Who gives a damn about the bloody shamrock, you know? Yeah. Because that's, 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 that's silly. It, it is ridiculous, um, all right. I mean, I'm sure then the Kenny is going to be going over there with his tail between his legs anyway. Uh, yeah, after criticising you know. Trump. And uh, Leo Varadkar criticised him the other day because he said he was a nationalist. Now, I'd love to be criticised for having somebody making that criticism of me. Mm. You know, it's, 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 it tells you where their real agenda is. They're in a sellout. You know, Ireland is fast becoming a fascist state. It is you know? as well, yeah. I mean, look at, yeah. the, look at our police force. You know, they're getting themselves armed to the teeth now. They're looking like Robocop. And yet nobody is shooting at the guards. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I've been saying this all along since last year. Don't get me wrong, there's a gangland feud. We hear the gangsters getting killed every other day. But no one's, nobody's shooting at the guards. Well, when you drive out your little area at the 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning, there's a checkpoint down the road, and there's guys there with canines and submachine guns <laughs> checking tax. You know, yeah. that's not right. I know, and it's the same up where I live. Like, that's what they do. Like, tax checkpoints now with our armed guards. Guns. You know, you're nearly afraid not to have your, ta your car taxed in case they shoot you. You know, They're it's just revenue collectors. You know, yeah. the culprits know. are not really the statute makers, but the useful idiots who stand at those roadblocks and carry out their orders. Yeah. I oh, mean, over time for them. that's where it is. Tom, listen, I need to go to a quick break, so do you mind hanging on for a couple of seconds? No problem. That'd be great. Folks, we'll be back in two minutes with Tom. Broadcasting to Lucan, this is Lippy Sound, 96.4 FM. Now, folks, you're very welcome back. Tom, you're still with me? I'm with you, yes. That's brilliant, that's brilliant. Now, Tom, I'm going to move on from the Donald, because everybody seems to be talking about the Donald over the last couple of weeks. Um, I just want to wish him every success. Hopefully he does turn into a, another JFK and he takes the whole bloody system down and yes. turns the world into the peaceful place that we all know it can be. Now, moving on, Tom, in this country in particular, like we, as you said, this country's been raped left, right and centre by corporations. Why do you think, you know, the Irish take this it's like i mean christy moore the uh the folk singer even he said it, that ireland had become a nation of obedient shit takers why do you think that is do you think uh, it's mass uh, hypnosis or is there something else it's it's mass hypnosis is one thing plus what passes for education in the schools plus what i call um the um what i put it the um the stockholm syndrome stockholm right. syndrome is if if they can um terrorize you and mess you up enough and rob you of taxes and make you feel uncomfortable enough and frighten you about whether you'll keep your job and all the rest of it, you you, you, you become enslaved to them and, and you think they're going to save you. Yeah, it's like Patty Hearst. Exactly. Didn't she have Stockholm Syndrome, didn't she? Yeah, we'll call it the Patty Hearst Syndrome is a yeah. very good way of putting it, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 for those who think that that cannot happen, I'll just give people a, just a brief history of who she was. She was a, an heiress, a very wealthy young woman in America in the 70s. She was kidnapped by some gang, and after a few months, she ended up going out robbing banks with them. Yeah, they were called the Symbionese Liberation Army, right. a bunch of idiots. What were they called? The Symbionese Liberation Army. The Symbionese Liberation Army. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Yeah, the people's front of Judea, yeah. Oh, you couldn't make it. <laughs> but, um, but that was a very real case, Tom, was it not? I mean, she did it's develop what was known as Stockholm Syndrome. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm sure that goes on in a lot of families when, you know, you talk about stuff like parental alienation and stuff like that. Um, but I won't get into that now. Um, Tom, is there anything that the Irish people can do, though, Tom, to, you know, to reverse this? Well, the first thing is to, to do <clears throat> is to educate themselves. 
for example, they can educate themselves next month with that uh, meeting we're having in Waterford, right. which you have already advertised so well, and thank you very much I for will that. We'll be talking about that later on in the show as well. I have um, a pair of tickets to give away too, so... Fantastic, because we have people coming from all over Europe to talk there. Now, the state, what is the state? We've got to recognise that. It's a political system consisting of a body of people who are politically organised. Now, the system has rules by which jurisdiction and authority are organised over such a body of people. What does that mean? What does it mean to you and me? It means if you're an employee of the state, you're, you're subject to it. If you're politically organised as part of a political party, you're subject to it. And if you're a politician, you're subject to it. If you're one of those, the state then has a rope around your neck and you can't do a thing about it. However, they claim to have a social contract with the people. And a social contract is an expression of an implied agreement between the citizens and the government by which the individual agrees to surrender certain freedoms in exchange for mutual protection. That is the agreement forming the basis of what a political society is. Now, the political society is the state. The people of the state are politically organised. They have a system of rules by which their jurisdiction is exercised over them because they have an institution of self-government. Now, the Irish state was set up by the British government on December the 22nd and on December 1922 replacing the Irish Republic, which had been created by Dáil Éireann on the 21st of January, which we celebrated the other day. Mm. And they usurped that because King George created this new state. We have no allegiance to the state he created. Now, you may have heard of things called civil rights. Now, civil rights, and there are civil rights movements, civil rights and rights. Civil rights are about taking away your rights because you are born with sovereign and mm. unalienable rights that nobody has a right to take away from you. Civil rights comes from being a citizen. So specifically, a citizen is a member of a political community owing allegiance to a community and being entitled to its civil rights. That doesn't account for your, your, your true rights. and real sovereign rights. Now, they took all your unalienable rights and freedoms and bundled them into a social contract and give you civil rights or protection instead. However, there's a problem there. The state says it has no obligation to us. So it's in violation of them straight away. For example, it imposed the debt of private banks on the people without any reference to the people. The state robbed you, they robbed me, they robbed our children, grandchildren, unborn children for the next several generations. Therefore, we don't have a valid social contract. They have violated it. We're expected to give up our unalienable freedoms in exchange for protection by a state, but they give us no protection. They rob us. On the contrary, they rob us from our oil, our gas, our minerals, our fisheries, as you said before, and they're trying to package our rights into a private for sale corporation. Therefore, the state claims to be a social contract is now invalid. It has no standing because there is no protection and no consideration for the people. They just rob us. In turn, that means the political society and community no longer exists in its true meaning. The contract with the people has been broken, which means that a state on which it is based can no longer legitimately exist. The state is now illegitimate. The state is a complete fiction, in fact. But now, wasn't the... No longer Sorry? Wasn't the state illegitimate anyway? Like, I mean, in 1918, as you well know, Tom, there was a 32-county all-Ireland general election, and the IRB won that election, and they were given a mandate to, to form Dáil Éireann. And they yeah, formed yeah, Dáil Éireann, yeah. and, as you says, King George V says, oh, hell, I can't be having this, and he imposed the Oireachtas upon the people. Yeah, yeah. So that, that makes, that makes them... I mean, I mean, they even admit themselves that, are, that they are a provisional de facto government. They do, but they can't claim anything else. So, and in fact, they can't actually claim... That there was an act in 1965 where they were claiming jurisdiction over all the land and all the waters and everything of the state, and it, it, it fell in the Supreme Court simply because... There was a, pri a prior claim from the original 1919 government and the IRB. Now, so since the state has no semblance of legitimacy, leg legitimacy left, it is that all these e evictions are unlawful, mm. and people's homes and uh, are being broken into. The banks are robbing the people with the conniv connivance of a crooked judiciary, which is basically the Bar Association, British Accredi Accredited Registry. Yeah. It's a British system. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the water protesters, for example, you can see the beginning of what we call a, total a, total a totalitarian junta, yeah. because they treated them with absolute utter contempt 
uh, uh, which was pretty awful. Yeah, I mean, so we just had to look at the way those lads from Jonestown were treated in the children's court. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, was, Tom, can I mean, it, it was a kangaroo court. Yeah. Uh, Robbie wants to jump in there, sorry, Tom. Robbie, yeah, go Tom. ahead. Just um, looking at a couple of articles there over the last few weeks regarding the whole Brexit. Now, you know, the usual um, push in the media about disaster for Ireland if uh, Brexit, you know, fully goes ahead and they dissolve their union with the um, the European Union, how the neg- negative effect will have on Ireland for, you know, trading. And then what's going to happen to Northern Ireland, Scotland? You know, there was um, predictions there that, you know, by 2020, Northern Ireland could possibly become part of Ireland, you know, because uh, the majority there now was, you know, uh, mostly Catholic and all that, and, and they probably look to the south of Ireland, you know, to, to join up and, you know, make a, a six million people population and, and kind of strengthen that. Um, you, have you, have you um, taught yourself on a uh, united Ireland with, with the, the, the whole Brexit thing and Scotland and all even getting independent? Any thoughts on that? Well, Scotland will become independent, and I'm sure, and I'm 69 years of age now, I'm sure that in my lifetime I'll see a United mm. Ireland. The problem is what kind of United Ireland will it be? Because if it's under a, a junta like we have at the moment, it won't be really worth the paper it's written on. So, Tom, I was... So, sorry, go ahead, Tom. Sorry. Uh, so, it, it's vitally important that we take back our power and we educate people to take back our power. And we form groups of people. There are groups of people all over the country. There's wonderful. There's two wonderful groups in Cork, for example. One of them calls itself the Hedge Schools that are educating people about this. The other one calls itself Mehel. And then there's the IRB in Tipperary. And then there's another group down in Carrick and Shure. And there's groups all over the country forming... And those groups are kind of loosely aligned to one another and they can become even more tightly aligned to one another and they will do something useful. Now, last year, I gave two talks to the employees of the European Union. And the first talk I gave, I decided I was going to burn the bridges and I talked about sovereignty just as I have done now. And I thought, they'll never invite me back. You know what? They did. They liked it. I couldn't believe it. So how could so you not like it, Tom? Something new for them to think about. <laughs> but how well, could you not like you that know, concept, that the concept of sovereignty? Of, of this, this super state, or this, this, this new Soviet Union called the EU, mm. but they know its days are numbered. I Come was it. there the night that um, Britain pulled out, and they were all gobsmacked and astonished. Do you think they were expecting that? No, they were sure Britain would stay in. Wait, now here's my next question, Tom. If... It's 100% true that Ireland is under the ilk of the crown, i.e. through the Oireachtas. Yeah. Okay, and we're still basically a British colony. Yeah, we are. And Britain have exited from the European Union. Does that not mean we've exited from the European Union too? I mean, does this not throw up some massive problems that they obviously can't tell the people about? Yes, it does. There's a lot of problems and there's a lot of legal problems that they can't tell the people about. The whole thing is a total mess at the moment. Oh, but what do you think they, they're going to do? Like, what can they do? Oh, they'll, they'll carry on with the bluster since that, that they have since the 1937 constitution with the, the bluster, and they keep, they'll keep on pretending as they have been doing. Uh, they'll, they'll just keep lying and lying and lying and lying and get away with it as long as we're prepared to listen to them. Mm. I mean, and it's been that way for a long Wake up and stop listening to them. So when you look at all these politicians, like, you know, Enda Kenny and stuff like that, with his Mayo accents, you know, I'm from Castle Baird and I grew up in Castle Baird, or, you know, Michael Noon and I'm from, I think he's from Cork or something, is he? From, no, he's from Limerick. Oh, he's from Limerick, okay, well, I grew up in Limerick on the hard streets of Limerick, and, you know, compared to your well, I grew up on the north side of Dublin, you know, in the, in the tough old days, and, you know, they come across as 100% Irish, you know, diddly eyed lie, but they're not. How can they be if they know what really is going on, and they're willing to progress that system further? No First of all, Mike the Noonan is a Bilderberger. That means he's an internationalist. That means he is... Has no allegiance country. to this country. Yeah, he has no allegiance to this country. He's a traitor, basically, to this country. I mean, in February 2013, the Royal Oireachtas Finance Minister, Michael Noonan, announced the transfer of $25 billion of people's money into promissory notes that made them rock several bonds that put the bill on the people. In other words, he transferred the bank's bills into the people's bills. The, the banks, what they owed, he now says the people owe. That's a lie, and that's unlawful, and that's fraud. Treason is what it is. It was, it was something of that magnitude. It should have been a referendum, but it wasn't. The carpet was pulled. But see, that's what they did in the 1937 constitution. They removed, a uh, devil removed the possibility that yeah. we could have a referendum on any issue. Hmm. 
I mean, and Tamil Tiger. He did a lot of nasty things. That constitution was approved in, in, by, by the Vatican. Yeah, it's, it's, Jesuits. It's disgra- yeah. absolutely disgraceful when you think about it, you know. Yes. That the country has been, you know, raped in such a way by people who were actually born in this country. I mean, it, it pisses me off, Tom, and I'll tell you why, because I wasn't even born in this country. I was born in Germany and I have more passion for this place than most Irish people I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, most Irish people, they don't seem to quite realise that they're Irish people. They don't know what they are. They're just somebody that wants a job, wants to work, wants to pay their credit card, their car payments, their mortgage if they're lucky enough to have one, or their rent if they're not, or whatever else. And they're so browbeaten down by this that they're just surviving from day to day and hoping they won't lose their job just, and hoping they won't lose their house and hoping they won't lose their, you know, everything else because so many people are. And they're terrified. Uh, th- we're ruled by fear. You know, th- these courts, for example, they have no jurisdiction whatsoever because unless you contract with them, they have no right whatsoever to make any laws governing you or to make any determinations. And in fact, wh- when a judge does make a determination, I've noticed and I've seen, they don't sign them. Like if they get a, if somebody gets an eviction order, it's signed by somebody else in the court. Yeah, the judge the won't sign his own eviction order because he won't take responsibility yeah. for it. But he's made the determination, but he won't sign it. And Ben Gilroy has proved that on numerous occasions, with even he the has, videos yes. he's put on YouTube. He's had the sheriff up at the door, and he's even proved that the sheriff is putting on two different hats, which is unlawful. They can't do that, you know? Absolutely, that's true, yeah. No, it's madness. Tom, I need to go to another break, so do you mind hanging on for a minute or two? No problem. That'd be great. Folks, we'll be back in two minutes with Tom Ryan. You're listening to Liffy Sound, www.liffysoundfm.ie. Listen online, community radio at its best. Local programmes, local presenters, local news. Tune to Liffy Sound 96.4 FM. You're tuned to The World You Don't Know with Mick O'Connell on Liffey Sounds 96.4 FM. Text Mick now on 87 7138 or email studio at liffeysoundfm. You're listening to Liffey Sound. Now, folks, you're very welcome back. That should not have started again. I think that was the ad starting again there. Um, yes, you can text the, the studio on 87 7138 if you've got any comments. Tom, you're still with me, aren't you? I am indeed, yes. Now you, just before, I've got about 10 minutes left, Tom, because I do want to have a quick chat about the conference as well, and I've, as I said, I have two tickets to give away um, to the listeners. You was just mentioned their fear. This fear that the people have, you know, fear of standing up. We said the lads are here in the studio, and we were talking there that, you know, why this country's in such a state, and I was explaining to one of the lads in the studio that prior to there being the taxation system, you know, not just here, but in America and stuff like that, you know, roads were being built, there were schools, there was railways, it, all this before taxation... You know, people thinking, like, if taxes are not paid, none of this will happen. All that stuff had already happened before taxation came in. You know, corporations would have built roads to charge you for using them, wherever. And it was in their interest to have roads anyway, if they're going to be selling their goods all across America. Yeah. You know, and then, then we've got the taxation system that came in, like in America, say, for example, in 1913. And for some reason, American people didn't stand up and say, no, we're not having this Federal Reserve system. They bought it and they've been getting screwed by it ever since. And similar thing is going on in this country. Do you think people will ever get over that fear? And where does that fear start? Do you think it starts in school? Yes, of course it starts in school. Sit down, behave yourself, and ask for permission to go to the toilet. You see, what we don't realise is man created governments and corporations. The government conspires to reverse that role. The state is merely a construct of the mind of man. It is no life, no reality, other than that given to it by the living flesh and blood man and woman. Now, any claims made on its behalf that infringe the individual sovereign rights are repugnant and unalienable to the inherent right of the flesh and blood man or woman. Therefore, there is no flesh and... Uh, th- therefore, the state has no power over a flesh and blood man or woman. It is a creation of the people, and the creation cannot in any way be superior to that which created it. This is self-evident, really. Man created the state and the system. The creator cannot rule... The creation cannot rule the creator. So... With the brainwashing and the fear and the stupidity are enough to give the state consent. And right. then they rule over people with that fear. So the answer is do not consent. There are many ways to assert your sovereign powers. For example, if you have to go into court about anything, you write a letter in about five to ten days beforehand and you register that letter and you tell them that they have no jurisdiction. We have beaten the um, many of the people. We've got, I've gone to court so many times with so many people that have beaten traffic offences, 
that have beaten uh, the television license and all the rest of it, all those cases are struck out because they won't dare say what's in those letters that go in. Because they know they have no rights. And they have no rights unless we give them consent. And the only reason anybody gives them consent is out of fear. Mm. Sorry, uh, Tom, could you give us an example, uh, a small one of uh, a TV license? What would you send in, you know, just to uh, defend yourself or to, you know, put your affidavit in? And say, Thank you very much <clears throat> for your correspondence. Um, I, 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 I would like to thank you for your offer of, of, co of contract. But however, I'm not entering into any one-sided adhesion contracts at the moment. So therefore, um, this is not invite. Something like that. That's just off the top of my head. It, it, it's, 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 we have a, a special way of writing it down. It, it's, it's much more concise and more presentable. But, but than this that. is this is what people probably fear. You know, the you don't know how to uh, manage these kind of uh, letters or ward them. You know, and like, like like I said, you're out there giving advice, which is great. But I think this is part of the fear factor because it's the unknown for people. You know, they've never gone down this road before. So That's true. But they could join those groups around the country. Like I mentioned, those groups in Cork and Tipperary and there's groups in Kildare, there's groups in Wexford, there's groups all over the country, in the Midlands as well. And they're educating the people. And if people don't educate themselves, then they're going to be screwed by the system and they're going to be screwed by their own fear, which has been placed into them by the education system. You see... The education system is never going to educate people to overturn itself. Yeah, they won't either. They're not, no, I mean, no, why they would they, you know? No, I'm sure that's why would they? Exactly. So the education system isn't an education I mean, system, it's an indoctrination system. Yeah, I, well, I remember being in school now. I went to the Christian Brothers and you know quite well what they were like at trying to I teach children. I did myself, so I you know, know, yes. But um, I can remember asking them awkward questions. You know, they'd be talking about God and stuff like that and I'd ask them awkward questions like, you know, prove his existence to me. You know, before yeah. he listened to any more of your crap. And, oh, yeah, you got a box in the jaw for your efforts, you know. Or a belt of a leather, yeah. Mm. Or I got that many times, yeah, the leather strap on the hand, six of the best. You know, but we had, we, I remember we had a headmaster in school. He was a Christian brother. Um, I won't mention the man's name, but um, he since left. He ran off with the secretary, fair play to him. But anyway, we used to get sent down to this guy, and he obviously had a lot of compassion for children, and he had a conscience, you know. Yeah. But what he would do is, you get sent to his office for six of the best, and this is why they got rid of him. But you'd get sent to his office, he'd tell you to rub your hands off the wall and he'd give you a packet of Rolo. <laughs> and you'd have the Rolo in your pocket, rub your hands off the wall and walk in with tears in your eyes, letting on you got whacked on the hand. But he would never hit you, you know. But he was only there for six or seven months, they got rid of him. Uh, we had a superior like that, he, he was a fantastic man. In fact, they sent him off to Africa. See, that's what they do, they get rid of them. Now, Tom, I'm going to move on, I've got a few minutes left. I'm going to move on now to the conference, because you are appearing at the uh, Open Minds Conference, Open Minds Island Conference, in Dooley's Hotel in February. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and what you're going to be doing at that conference? Well, <clears throat> I was talking there about the problems of sovereignty. What I'll be talking about now is the solutions and uh, giving the actual uh, script of what to say when you get a, one of those bills from the government and how to protect yourself from them. You know, I, I'll be showing the people the difference between what is lawful and what is legal. Legal is a scam. Lawful is what is what's inside of ourselves innately. Yeah. And if we if we don't learn that, we may find ourselves and our children marching into death camps in the future. It's gone that bad. Do you think it would get that bad even in this country? Our illegal, sovereign power now. And if we don't do that, we're condemning our children and, and our grandchildren in the future. And do you think it could get like that in this country? I mean, I've grown up in Ireland and it's been... You know, we had the troubles in the north and all that, but, like, living down in Dublin, we never seen that. We didn't feel it, you know what I mean? So we can... You know, people in Dublin cannot identify with people from Northern Ireland. We can't. You know, because we didn't live in the same environment as them. So, you know, I would say my life in this country... I moved here when I was six years old. Now, my family are all Irish, but I happen to be born in Germany. But I moved here when I was six, and it's been relatively peaceful in this country for the whole time I've been here, you know? Whereas yeah. you see places like Syria, you know, I mean, that's one place I wouldn't like to live right now, you know. Horrible, yeah. God help the people there. You know, do you think it could ever get as bad as that in, in this country? It could, because bit by bit it's been taken over by this junta in Brussels. And if we and decide then to stand up... Come up with, if you go to Brussels at the moment, you'll see soldiers in the street with machine guns mm -hmm. all over the place, everywhere. It's like what it, in 1990s, it's like what it was in Belfast. And they're, they're driving fear and fear and fear into the people. The same thing is happening in uh, France. Now, they've declared martial law in countries like uh, Croatia, but I was out there over the Christmas and uh, <laughs> they must have declared it and then forgotten about it because they were busy building a, a ski slope down the centre of the city, which is very unusual. 
even though they've declared yeah. martial law. Yeah, so they, 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 the government declared martial law because that was pressure from the EU and they declared it but ignored it and they haven't done anything about it. But France and Belgium have taken it very seriously and their soldiers in the streets everywhere. Well, if soldiers on the streets tells me it's martial law, it's it the only martial. reason for having soldiers on the streets. There's no reason for having soldiers on the streets unless the soldiers are running the bloody thing. Yeah. And they are on the streets all over Belgium. They're on the streets all over France. I mean, we've seen those attacks in France. I mean, as soon as they happen, like the Paris attacks, the Bataclan Theatre, for example, you know, yeah. the conspiracy theories are all over. And, you know, whether they're genuine events or false flags, they certainly do look like false flags. The amount of evidence that's put out there, pointing out the fact that it could be a false flag. And then now, but, as you said... Whether it's a false flag or not, the government are using it to terrorise. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. They, they use that as an excuse. It's like the old saying, they never let a good disaster go to waste. <laughs> they never. That's true. They never let a good disaster go. To you know, waste. whether it's something to do with them or not. Yeah, you know, yeah. they they but will we use have an Orwellian it. media at the moment who are trying to control the people. I mean, you never get the truth about people being evicted from their homes in our media or what passes for our media in Ireland. They never tell the truth about the real th horror that's going on. That there was, I think, a dozen uh, since Christmas. There's been a dozen suicides in Cork. Not a word on the media about that. Nothing. This is pretty. Why are those young people committing suicide? Because they can't see no future for themselves. Yeah. It's absolutely shocking, Tom. It really is. I mean, I've seen the day we sat near Apollo House. One thing that struck me most about that was, with all the to and fro that was going on in the courts, I can't help thinking that was some sort of a psyop, to be honest. Because with all the to and fro that went on in the courts and the whole nation getting behind the, the, the groups that were involved in it and stuff like that, one word that wasn't mentioned throughout that whole process was the word dwelling. You know, yes, I'm, they, they never used that. And Ben Gilroy offered to go into the court yeah, on their behalf. And, and they wouldn't, yeah. Out. And they ignored him. So it seems like it was a controlled opposition operation. Yeah, it, it, I had a feeling about that now myself. I'm not saying it was, I don't know. Don't get me wrong, taking 40 people off the streets and giving them decent, half-decent accommodation at Christmas time, that's a, a humanitarian effort that's well worth well, doing. Well, any state that can't do that is not legitimate. But to see something like that happening in a country where there's a quarter of a million houses blocked up and it, in the possession of the banks, like mm. it's madness, it's nuts. I mean, are we insane or something? Uh, well, we have an insane government who are doing what they're told to do by Brussels. And they have no consideration for the people. They'll come out in before an election, they'll make all kinds of promises. Do they keep any? Not one. No, I mean, who? I don't get it, Tom. Like, you know, I grew up listening to all this lark about the fighting Irish and all that. And yet we would, you know, march blindly into the European Union. Did people back then not see this crap coming down the line? You know, because I remember I grew up in the south inner city. Now, I remember where I lived, there used to be a, a massive big monastery for the Christian brothers. The thing was huge, and there was probably about 150 rooms in it, and there was a school attached to it. But they knocked it down, and the site was lying idle for years, but they wanted to build a prison on it. Right smack bang in the middle of Dublin night beside Guinness's Brewery. And there was a lot of opposition to it. Mm -hmm. But this was coming down from the EEC at the time. That yeah. the pressure to build this prison there, but there was a lot of resistance there, and it never did go ahead. There's a housing estate there now, you know, council houses or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, even something like that, it's forcing a prison. To well, I, I think what people. they were doing, but at the time, looking back, I was only a child, but looking back, I think what they were doing was testing the waters to see how far they could push a local community. Yeah. But they pushed it far, Tom, but they stood up and they said, no, we're not having it, and it never happened. Yeah, well, remember one thing, and this was said by Mao Zedong, believe it or not. He said, politics is war without bloodshed, yeah. while war is politics with bloodshed. Yeah, it would have gone. And that sums it all up. Yes, what was it he says? Uh, change politics will come through the battle of a gun. Bloodshed. Yeah, you yeah. You know, Mao Zedong. Well, Tom, listen, um, as he says, you're going to be appearing at the Open Minds Conference on the 25th and the 26th. Of February, that's Brilliant. Right. So, well, I'll be down there myself, so I look, I, I look forward to seeing you appearing at that, and we'll catch up and we'll have a point, Tom. Look forward to that. Well, listen, thanks very much for coming on to the World You Don't Know show. I really appreciate it. And thank all your listeners for listening. I will indeed. Thanks very much, Tom, and I'll talk thank to you very soon. Bye-bye. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that was Tom Ryan. Um, he's got a great website oh, um, called TotalMindDynamics.com. Go on there, he's a hypnotist. If you want to give up smoking or have anxiety issues and stuff like that, or you want to learn about your sovereignty, get in touch with Tom Ryan. Uh, he's an absolute gentleman, a nicer man you could not meet, I promise you that. Now, um, as I said there, I've got a pair of tickets to give away for the Open Minds Conference. Now, the Open Minds Conference takes place on the 25th and 26th of February next in Dooley's Hotel down in Waterford. And that is organised by the Awaken Aware in the South East Ireland Facebook page. Now, there's lots of pages on Facebook giving out lots of information about what's going on um, with this 
fascist government that we have in this country and fascist government worldwide that are pushing this new world order agenda forward and all the other crap that's going on. Um, but there's lots of groups springing up left, right and centre all over social media, getting shut down left, right and centre as well uh, my, uh, by fascist book. But this one seems to be growing and growing and growing in popularity um, Awaken Away in South East Ireland. And they've organised this conference. Now, they've got some very good speakers. Um, some speakers that I've had on my show. Um, Ian O'Crane, who is an ex-oil executive, he's going to be speaking at that. Tom, who I've just had on there, he's going to be speaking at it, talking about sovereignty. And as you heard him saying there, he's going to be talking about solutions as well, Robbie. Not just That's it, like, uh, what sovereignty is. Full I mean, circle, yeah. There's no point in knowing what sovereignty is if you don't know how to exercise sovereignty. Don't get me wrong, we're not all 100% sovereign because we're caught up in this bloody system. You know, some might say, you know, well, if you're 100% sovereign, you won't pay tax on anything. Well, you can't avoid that. If you're going to buy petrol in a garage, you're going to pay the VAT on it. It's already attached to the cost of it. It's the same for anything else you buy in any shop, anywhere. But if you're a lone trader and you're working for cash into the hand, this is another reason they're trying to get rid of cash, by the way, yeah. It's to stop people being loan traders and being sovereign individuals. Because if you're dependent on a system for your income, whether it be digital money, which they're pushing for, as you well know, or cash, and you're dependent on that system to get your hands on that, well, then the system has you. It's the matrix has you, basically, you know? Well, that's it. And also, you know, people need to have the right to go out and work for themselves and be self-employed, you know what I mean? Yeah. And be their own entrepreneur, you know, and, and that's not being allowed anymore because of the big corporation. Well, it's in order to, up. yeah, I mean, you might think you're free, but if you want to start up a business, you've got to get business insurance, you pay rates, this, yep. register your business, you know, just a ton of things, get a tax clearance and all these and policies are put in place by lobbyists through corporations mm. and it's pushed through the government. This is why the small man doesn't have a look in anymore. Yeah, and they never it's will policy have a look of in. the corporation yeah. and it's lobbied through the government. Yeah, do you want to bring... All for a brown envelope. You want to bring about a, a global corporate fascist dictatorship. It's like um, that great Scotsman, what's his name, Grant Morrison. Um, I watched a speech he'd done a few years ago, and in the speech he says, if we're not careful with the way corporations are going on, yeah. we're all going to wake up one morning and we're going to be living in McDonald's. Or Taco Bell. Or Taco Bell. Well, anyway, folks, listen, the competition is going to be open for a week, OK? It's not just, you're not going to be able to ring in tonight. Now, as I said, there's two tickets to give away. For the Open Minds Conference in Dooley's Hotel on the 25th and 26th of February. Now, if you want a chance of winning those tickets, here's the question. At the start of my show, there's an intro, the, the show's theme, and there's a voiceover on it, talking as the, the theme starts. I want to know who that guy is. Tell me, um, you can not put your answer on a postcard, but you can email me. <laughs> <laughs> email. A more advanced here's the email this. address for you folks. The world you don't know at gmail.com that's the world you don't know at gmail.com now I'm going to leave this competition on until next Friday at 6pm I'm not taking any more emails after 6pm next Friday whoever gets them in that time I'll randomly pick a winner I, I'll get somebody else to pick the winner I won't even know who the winner is and they'll tell me who it is so you have until next Friday at 6pm to email the world you don't know at gmail.com who is the man that is talking on the intro to my show so folks if you know the answer you can win two tickets and listen don't enter if you can't go and just one more thing before you go, I'll just put a question up there on the Words You Don't Know Facebook page of the day regarding John, Donald Trump. Had some really good feedback and a lot of positive thoughts from people. A few negative ones, uh, a few people sitting on the fence, but in uh, regards to um, how things might turn out, very positive. Uh, keep the, the suggestions and the comments coming in. You I know, keep it's the really positive great. vibes going. It's, it's really great to interact That's with it. the people out there. Well, folks, this has been the Words You Don't Know, and as I always say in the show, the world is full of great people. If you can't find one, be one. Until next time, folks, take a handy. Talk to you all very soon. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret society, to secret oath, and to secret proceedings. Waking humanity, one soul at a time. This is The World You Don't Know Radio Show with your host, Nick O'Connell.